Dr. Christina Clamp is world-renowned as a cooperative researcher, educator, and practitioner. Her work is grounded in the values of civil rights, social justice, and inclusion. She has been called a superb educator of emerging cooperators, a legacy that will impact generations. Dr. Clamp recently retired from a professorship at Southern New Hampshire University, where she was the director of the Center for Cooperatives. For 40 years, she and her students sought cooperative solutions to real-world problems. SNHU students created a youth housing cooperative, developed a food co-op business plan, launched shared service cooperatives, and established a co-op directory. Now, hundreds of SNHU alumni work on community economic development projects all over the world. Chris Clamp was born in 1953 in Amityville, Long Island. Her father, Ted, died when she was nine, leaving her mother, Marge, to raise five children on her own. Marge needed to find a job, which was difficult because she didn't have a high school diploma. The kids also needed to find work. For a while, Chris taught piano to pay for her own music lessons. Chris's mom eventually found employment with the county government. The experience left her determined that her children should not struggle as she had. Education, she told them, was their ticket to financial security. Chris heard her mom. She got a scholarship to St. John the Baptist High School, where the nuns instilled in her an awareness of civil rights and social justice. The sisters hoped their bright student might have a religious vocation, but Chris had other plans. With encouragement from an English professor at her first college, she transferred to nearby Friends World College. She was moved by the Quaker-influenced values of the school, centered on human dignity and community. As she watched her male peers being drafted to serve in Vietnam, Chris looked for opportunities to learn from cultures outside of the United States. She was ready to learn about the world from a different perspective. Chris's studies took her to the American South, to the Highlander Center in Tennessee, and to Georgia, where she learned about rural cooperatives for the first time. She traveled to Florida, where she worked as a civil rights field worker for the Southern Regional Council and volunteered for a youth job placement program. Her experiences opened the eyes of the college kid from New York. She was stunned, for example, to hear her landlord in Broward County brag about owning a lynching tree. Chris studied social justice movements in Costa Rica and Guatemala. In India, she studied the Gandhian model of social justice and cooperatives. While visiting Nepal, she met her future husband, Don Ganini. On their first date, Don helped her exchange dollars for rupees on the black market. They've been together now for 44 years. By the time Chris enrolled in grad school at Boston College, she was clear about her purpose, to do research to support a social solidarity economy. She traveled to the Basque region of Spain to study the world's largest worker cooperative, Mondragon. As part of her investigation, she interviewed 50 co-op managers and co-op founders. She returned in subsequent years for follow-up interviews. The resulting research continues to inform worker co-op human resource strategies worldwide. Throughout her career, Chris served multiple terms on the boards of influential cooperative organizations, including NCBA CLUSA, the ICA Group, the Food Co-op Initiative, and the Local Enterprise Assistance Fund, LEAF. She offers her expertise to many small community economic development projects as well. In New Hampshire, she helped establish a farmer's market co-op. In North Carolina, she organized training for black-led community development groups. In Cincinnati, she developed curricula for Co-op Cincy, a nonprofit incubator of worker cooperatives. Chris even advised her daughter, Caitlin, on how to set up Samara Collective, a communications co-op. Although she is retired now from teaching, Chris continues her research. In 2022, she co-edited a collection of 30 essays highlighting the story of Mondragon and its influence in the world. The 400-page book is already recognized as a guide for those interested in a model for structural change in our economic institutions. Early in her career, Chris Clamp was approached by a CIA case agent interested in employing her skills for international espionage. 
Fortunately, she chose to be an activist scholar instead for her pioneering work in the study and promotion of cooperative ownership of business. We honor Dr. Christina Clamp tonight with induction into the Cooperative Hall of Fame.